Let's get to the Mitchell Miller conversation, uh, not to avoid it. Obviously, it's it's the giant ass elephant in the room. Just an absolute mm -hmm. shit show. Just your opinion on everything that's transpired over the last 72 hours and how much your perception has changed of your beloved Boston Bruins. Um, yeah, it's it a shit show. There's no doubt about it. Um, you know, I, I just, I don't like when we get mealy mouth excuses like, like you know, Don Tweeney, I'm not his biggest fan. I'm, you know, I've, I've been on the record with that. His press conference the other day, it was like, this guy, like, he's obviously defending something he wasn't 100% behind. He said it just might not be the right call and I'm not even for it. And it's like, okay, well, then who's it from? Is it, if, if it's not the Jacobs, then it's got to be Neely. He's the only guy above him. And then, you know, they nearly, uh, the press conference, not press conference, I'm sorry, the tweet last night, it says, well, we became yeah. privy to more information. And it's like, come on, man. Like, you know, like, uh, I, I'm a, I admit I'm biased with Neely. He's my favorite player. I do admit I have a bias there. But it's like, come on. Now I feel like you're pissing on my leg and telling me it's raining out because <laughs> this information is out there, man. I knew I knew more about this case a year ago because the, the Arizona Republic did an in-depth story on it. And, like, you know, don't – unless you really researched it that poorly and, and you – screwed up that then that's a bad screw up or if you if you found all this and thought it was different i think what the case was and nearly i will say he he had his press today he, he took his lumps today I'm not, I'm not giving him credit for it but he owned the mistake he come out he said we screwed up i thought he thought and i i think maybe five or six years ago with these circumstances maybe the signing wouldn't have been uh as i'll say a big of a deal but maybe the blowback wouldn't have been as bad i think in 2022 given that this player, you know, picked on a special needs uh, student who was black and he, and he used racial epithets with him. That's just something people don't have a stomach for right now. Even if he was 14 yeah. years old, it wasn't a one-time thing that was, you know, over a period of years. And, you know, this kid, I don't know what his remorse level is. I don't know that it was high or low. And I know the mom is upset and has every right to be. And I think, you know, her, her opinion of his remorse, it seemed to get echoed by the media, I think, like, this, I mean, and this, I'm not defending the kid, but he did his legal requirements. He actually did make that apology in court. I know there's a story out there. He didn't apologize. He apologized to all the other teams. That's incorrect. I mean, I'm not defending him. He made that apology in yeah. court. Whether the sincerity of it was real or not, I don't know. But he made his apology. He did the community service. From his legal sense, he did, you know, what he was, was required. And, and a lot of times in a criminal case, Nick, you know, the person convicted doesn't talk to the victim. You avoid it. Like, you know, like in any criminal case, mm -hmm. like the last thing you're going to do is go near someone you're convicted of, of fucking with, messing with a bullion. So, you know, and again, it's not defending the kid. I just think there's a little bit of a gray area there with people. It's an emotional thing where, you know, okay, this kid maybe didn't show remorse to, to the family. Maybe he didn't reach out on his own, but he, you know, he read his apology in court. He wasn't required to. He didn't go above and beyond, but he did what was in a legal sense he was supposed to. And I think maybe the, the Bruins thought, well, okay, he did. He fulfilled that. So people maybe will forgive him like we're going to. And that wasn't the case at all. And it blew up in their face. Uh, but, you know, like I said, Neely, he, he, he owned it today. He said, I screwed up. Uh, I thought we, he, he would, could get a second chance. It wasn't the right call. Um, I screwed up and he owned it. So I don't know. I think everybody and, and can maybe move along. I think the Bruins track record is pretty good on, on this type of stuff. The, the locker room, I think Bergeron, Felino, Bashan. To have three players come out and shit on the front office like mm -hmm. that—that's, I would say, it's unprecedented. But it's certainly not common. I think the the the, the front office felt the brunt of that. Um, and yeah, I think at the end of the day, okay, the team screwed up. They real, they thought. No, I don't think they, they were gonna fool anybody. They just, I genuinely think they thought, okay, this happened years ago. Um, we can forgive the kid. And and there's just not an appetite in the public for forgiving this type of thing without again if this kid ironically if this kid maybe made a statement like Neely did today six years ago or five years ago maybe the mood would have would have been different for him because maybe he would have shown the quote-unquote remorse people were expecting from him but uh if the fact that he hasn't said or done anything you know at least outwardly people maybe feel he hasn't paid a, a suitable price and then you get to the whole uh Bettman statement which I thought was a little odd because if you asked anybody Thursday, hey, is Mitch Miller uh, eligible to play in the NHL? I don't think anyone would said no because, you know, a team renounced mm -hmm. his rights. Now, Arizona renounced his rights. That doesn't mean he, he he can't be picked up by anybody in the NHL. At least, to my knowledge, nobody said anything about it. So then Bettman comes out. Now it's sort of a union issue. Now the union doesn't want to necessarily go to bat for this kid, but they have to because that's what a union does. Like, well, this kid, like, who who knew he wasn't eligible to sign in the NHL before? Nobody said nothing. And so the, you're kind of getting in this gray area with, like, the union stuff. And, yeah, the, the, the best thing the Bruins to do is cut bait. Um, it's going to be interesting, though, because this kid's going to turn up somewhere. He obviously had a hell of a year. And 
there's a market for him, whether it's on this continent or another continent, he's going to play <laughs> somewhere. And uh, I'm curious to see where he it ends up. And, you know, and the kid, like, again, I don't know the kid, and he doesn't sound like a, a particularly good kid. And these weren't normal 14-year-old shithead shenanigans. Trust me, I know no. everyone says I was an idiot at 14. Listen, nobody did this stuff. To, to do what he did, it was deranged. I mean, to have a, you know, to pick on the the, uh, uh, the slow kid class, I know probably the word people don't say anymore. I'm an older guy. You know, the, the pick on the slow kid class is an asshole move anyways. But then to, to add, you had the racial element and then having him lick a, a urine-soaked lollipop, that's just fucked up deranged stuff. So there's... That's not normal 14 year old stuff, but you know, I don't know what, I don't know what the penance is. The, every case is different. You know, people talk about the kid in Montreal with the, the Swedish, you know, the sex crime. Yeah. Thing there. I don't know, you know what? That's Montreal's call. I, I don't know what the parameters are. Mm -hmm. Somebody you know, does a public penance. Does that lessen it? I don't know. These are questions that general managers and front offices have to answer and decide on. Uh, and you know, who knows what the right answer is. And with this Miller kid, I don't know. I don't know what it is or where, if he's going to have to go to Europe or if he's going to have to play somewhere in North America that's going to let him play to, and if he's going to have to come out and say, shit, I'm sorry, I fucked up. And if that's what it's going to take or if he's going to have to sit down with, with Gary Bettman. But um, yeah, the, the kid obviously still has some, some work to do in that regard if he's going to uh, gonna play professionally in North America, I'd say. Yeah, naturally, why was the question for me. And then on top of that, like, you know, the news comes out that Boston doesn't even talk to the victim. Like, you say you're due your diligence for a year and you've been working on this for a year. How do you not talk to the victim and their family, right? Like, that's my question. And number two, I think if there's a positive to gain from here is that the leadership core, as you referenced, as strong as ever and as any in this league, stepped up and said, no, thank you. Like, I think the comments and thoughts right away from Bergeron, who's just a pro's pro, Nikki Foligno, like up and down that roster, I like that they stepped in and said, this isn't happening.